Hear that? Pumpkin. That's fall calling. And the pumpkin spice latte is back at Starbucks. From that first sweater to late autumn weather, it's all of fall in just one sip. Order ahead on the Starbucks app. Stop using five apps to manage your marketing. Meet Simplified One. It's an AI-powered all-in-one platform for creators and small businesses to design, make videos, and publish content to all social media platforms. Visit Simplified.com and use Annika30 to save 30% today. Welcome to Your Brand Amplified, the podcast where we interview marketers, publicists, and brands to learn their stories, what makes them tick, and tips and tricks that make a difference. To find out more, point your browser to www.princubator.com or look us up at Annika Jackson PR. Welcome to this week's episode of Your Brand Amplified. And I am here with an amazing entrepreneur, Pete Moore, whose whole platform is about simplifying entrepreneurship, which I love because I know personally, I'm always looking for ways to make things a little easier in this journey. So welcome to the show, Pete. Thanks so much for having me, Annika. It's a pleasure to be here. And I'm so grateful that you asked me to come on your show. Absolutely. So how did you get to this part of your journey? Talk to us. Tell us your story. Well, before we hopped on, you said it was like a 15 or so minute show, not 27 or 29 years. So I'll, I'll do, the, <laughs> I'll do the, the quick the quick and dirty version. I mean, I've always been an entrepreneur, Annika. And, you know, I, I started off, you know, did did the things that people talk about, you know, have the, you know, little grass cutting business and, you know, doing what I could do for my neighbors and all that kind of stuff and went through business school. After business school, I went to work for my dad's best friend, who's also named Peter. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, loved his business, loved Peter. And, but from that perspective, at that time, I decided after about six months, you know, this isn't for me. I think I want to go out and do my own thing. And that was in 1994. And as we're recording this here in 2021, so 27 years ago, and I've never looked back. I've always been my own boss. I've always, you know, been an entrepreneur. I've uh, built, bought and sold businesses. I uh, currently own a couple of retail stores called Shootopia and really love helping other people, you know, cut through the chaos of uh, running a business and turning their frustrations of entrepreneurship into freedoms. And that's what I do with my simplifying entrepreneurship business coaching side of things. Nice. So I know one of the things that you wanted to touch on was the four P's and kind of the strategies that you use to help simplify entrepreneurship. Yeah. I mean, um, so many entrepreneurs are overworked, overwhelmed, um, tired, frustrated. Raising my hand right here. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Such a common thing. And, you know, what I try to do is, is help people free that up and, you know, create turnkey businesses that allow them to work on their business more and in their business less. I'm not saying you're only going to work on your business because that's not realistic for most of us. But from, from that perspective, you know, setting up the frameworks and, and allowing yourself the ability to give yourself the time to do what you want to do. I mean, most, most people got in business because they want a better life. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if you want a better life and all you're doing is working 50, 60, 70 hours a week and not seeing their friends, not having good relationships, being unhealthy, not not maybe creating the wealth that you want, uh, not delivering the mission that you want for your life and your business, then why are you doing it? And from that perspective, it's like, okay, let's reframe some of that stuff and start setting up the business with systems that allow you to turn those frustrations into freedoms by creating this this, um turnkey type operation that's going to deliver you your life. And I think so many people get sort of mired down and forget about why they got into business in the first place. And it all starts with reinvigorating that those juices and saying, hey, what do I want? And how do I want this look? And what do I really love about my business? And what don't I love? And who am I going to bring in to help me out with those sort of things so that I can live in my own genius zone and all of that other stuff. But it really all starts with the four P's that we're going to talk a little bit about here. And, you know, it starts with having the right product, the first P, you know, so I'm a retailer. So, you know, I sell shoes, so that's a product, but I'm also in the service business with simplifying entrepreneurship. So whether it's a product or a service, you have to be delivering something that people actually want, and they have to be able to see why using your service or you're buying your product is going to make their life better. Yeah. 
And if, the, if that's not something that's so visibly clear and so sort of slap in the face um, noticeable, then it's just a real problem. So when we look at sort of the, the uh, ideas around product, if you've been, if you haven't been in business for a while, one of the business, one of the busiest things with product is we're always trying to perfect it. We're trying to work on it. We're trying to make it perfect. And, you know, the idea of perfecting is wonderful. The idea of perfect is impossible. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, it's the same word. You spell it the same, you know, perfect, perfect, <laughs> perfecting and, and perfect. But, you know, from, from that perspective, we need to look at, you know, getting that product out, getting that service out to the public to see if there's any real demand for it. And that's yeah. one of the big things that a lot of entrepreneurs, they run out of cash before they even see if their product's valuable yeah. to anybody. Yeah. Right. And for those of us that have been in business for a long time, the idea behind your product is really stretching out. You know, everybody's heard of the 80 20 rule. But yeah. from that perspective, you know, you're looking at your legacy products, those legacy products that we've said, oh, we've always done that. It, it's part of what we do. Well, is it? Do people still want it? Is it too old? Is it too costly? Is it too slow? Is it not profitable anymore? You know, all of those things, we need to shave off 10% typically of the stuff that just isn't valuable anymore. And that's a really hard thing for people that are that have done this for a long time, right? If you've been an entrepreneur for a long time, it's a hard thing to let go of some of that stuff, but you really need to go back and look at it and say, is this actually contributing to the promise of our business? And is this making our customer have a better future, right? And then that 80% in the middle, what we need to do for that stuff that's really doing well and really bringing in, we need to continue to optimize that stuff. We need to automate as much as we can. And we need to outsource a lot of that stuff too. And outsourcing could be within your own business or it could be to outsource partners and optimize, autom automate and outsource is a wonderful little framework by a friend of mine, Ari Mizell. And, uh, but I, I love talking about that and that's another whole episode, but uh, you know, and then, and then the last 10% is really always be looking for new ways that are going to increase your promise and drive home your promise even faster, even cheaper, and even easier for your clients. So when you work, I mean, there's all sorts of frameworks that we have in simplifying entrepreneurship around that. But basically, if you think about those, you know, for startup people that don't have anything in the in the pipe already, don't keep perfecting, just get it out there. And you know, if it's 70% ready, let her roll and see what see what kind of feedback you get back and then work on it. And for people that have been in business a long time, think about that 10% you can get rid of the 80%, how you're going to structure that even better. And then that new um, 10% that you're going to move ahead. Absolutely. Everything you're saying is resonating with me so deeply because this is, I'm still in a startup phase, right? My business technically launched as a business with employees and other people, not just me last year. Yeah. Um, and I'm at that phase where these are exactly the questions I'm asking myself right now. Yeah. So it's so funny that we're having this conversation at this moment in time, because I'm saying, okay, what, what can we do more of? What can we do less of? What should we continue? What's really not helping us? What's really not helping and serving our customers and our clients? So that's kind of, this is a perfect show to have as we're going into Q4 and really looking ahead at how business is going to be structured for next year. The stars are aligning here. Yes. Anna. I mean, <laughs> I think one of the things whenever I go on podcasts, like I want to give people some takeaways, like mm -hmm. some of those things that you could actually get off, like pause this episode right now and, and start writing down a few of those things. Yeah. You're thinking about them right now. And then we'll, as we go on the other things, like, okay, pause, let's, let's work on this. And then, so we have these plans that we can start thinking about, put them in our calendar, put them in our schedule. You know, I, I've created a one page uh, sort of planner that I use and all this sort of stuff, but mm. basically set these things up so that you're continuously working through these P's so that your business is going to be even better for the next quarter and the next year. And it's going to deliver back to you that life that you deserve as an entrepreneur. All right. Well, I'm hooked. So what, cool. what's next? The Product. next <laughs> the next P is process. And from the process side of things, there are so many systems in everybody's businesses. And, you know, uh, one of my great coaches, Joel Weldon, introduced me to an acronym for the word system. And it's saves you stress, time, energy, and money. So what do systems do? They save you stress, time, energy, and money. And so whether that's the word system or the word process, 
process, uh, as they say in the States. Um, but, uh, you know, fr from that perspective, how are we aligning our processes and how are we working through those in our marketing, in our operations, in our human resources, in our hiring procedures, in our firing procedures, all these different things. How are we getting our clients in our funnels? I mean, all these things need to be laid out in a way that as we want to elevate and delegate essentially through our business, the next person needs to know how to take this on and what the system is and how to do that. And that's part of the biggest frustration is for most entrepreneurs, they have everything up here in their head and they're, they're it's like, oh, I'm the only person that knows how to do this. Well, <laughs> if you're the only person that knows how to do whatever it is, then there's a problem. Yes. Right. There's a big problem. You're never going to be able to break through that next level. And so that's a, that's a big piece. And so what with all the different processes in our business, what we want to do is we want to assess them. Are they still relevant? We want to advance them quicker, cheaper, easier. Any of those processes, we want to keep on working and make them even better. You know, new apps are coming out every day. New things are happening. And then we want to, this is the important piece, have somebody who's accountable for mm -hmm. them. And here's another big piece, right? And there's another big piece where most entrepreneurs, you know, have an issue with accountability, either, even, you know, whether it's for themselves or holding others accountable. And it seems to be one of these things where, you know, everybody says they're doing it, but they actually aren't. Mm -hmm. And, you know, from that perspective, you know, I work a lot with entrepreneurs and simplifying entrepreneurship and setting up accountability structures. And what does it look like? Who's in the right seat? You know, all of these different things so that we have the process, we have the accountability so that we know through our timelines that we're going to actually go ahead and achieve the processes. And, you know, sometimes processes are broken. They need to be fixed. Well, we assess them, we advance them, and then we put the person in place that's going to make this stuff happen, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, it's that same thing. You can use that 80, 20 rule on, on your processes too. get rid of those 10 that you just don't use that are collecting dust in some back corner, um, you know, optimize those 80 and always be looking for the new sort of ones that are going to be faster, cheaper, and easier. Yeah. And it does. It sometimes it takes time. I know that um, we've gone through several different programs and workflow systems to see what really works for mm -hmm. our clients and for our team. Mm -hmm. So for sure. And we always will. I mean, yeah. you know, that's our job as leaders is to be always looking for the new best thing so that, you know, and not necessarily <laughs> you're not necessarily telling everybody to implement the new best thing all the time, because that can be scary. Yeah. But from the <laughs> you know, that doesn't mean we don't need to continuously look for things and be researching things and always on the on the prowl for something that's going to advance our promise for our clients, because you know, that's what they want. They want a better future. They want a better life. They want a better business, whatever it is we're selling, you know, in the, in the, um, in our shoe stores, they want to feel, you know, we, we call it, they want to look great and feel fantastic. So that's how we're advancing them every day when they come in and they're, they're trying something on. It's like, okay, well, if I look great and I feel fantastic, then my life's going to be better. I'm going to be able to tackle the day. Right. So all of those different things along, what are our processes in place that are going to take that person through the journey in order to have a better life. And for, it doesn't matter whether you're selling shoes, you're selling coaching services, or, you know, you're a restaurateur, it's all the same thing. What's that experience journey and uh, all your processes in place um, are the important thing that it happens consistently so that everybody can expect what it promises. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So that leads us to the next key. Yeah. And it's often the biggest one. It's people. <laughs> people, you know, and I put, I put people into three different categories, uh, Annika, and those three are your client, your team, team and your uh, outsourced suppliers, basically. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, in the shoe store, that would be my wholesalers in my um, uh, coaching business. It's my partners, like my, uh, the people that I outsource different things to, right? Uh, so from that perspective, when we look at our client, for example, number one, we need to have cash flow, right? We need to have cash flow to continue things on. So who is your ideal client? And what does that look like? How, you know, how, why are they your ideal client? And I often will say, you know, you want to put these things, the client, your team and your suppliers into a map. And that map should be a dashboard sort of from one to 10. And you're saying, here's my ideal client. If I could get 10 of these people right now, I'd love it. And who's your worst client? 
And you can think of that. I'm sure you can think of that right now as you're listening. <laughs> who's, the best, who's the best client you've ever had? And who's the worst, the absolute dreadful yeah. client that you never want to see again, right? So you lay that out and then you lay it out in a map basically and saying, okay, from this is a one and this is a 10 and who, who's in between. And then when any anybody else comes in, you're always mapping them on sort of this idea of one to 10. And you're always structuring your processes in order to get more tens. And that's that, I mean, there's more to it than that, but that's in essence, the idea of working that sort of framework through your client, your team and your supplier, because you're doing the exact same thing with your team, yeah. right? Who's the worst team member you've ever had? Who's the best team member you've ever had? And how can I get more of those? What are the job ads that I'm going to put in place in order to attract more? What can I do to keep them How you know, loyalty and culture and all of that other stuff around that. But basically you're building all that based on your best and worst scenarios. You know, your, your ultimate team member, your poorest team member, and why, what do we need to put in place our processes and all that stuff to keep those people away and to attract more of these same with your suppliers, with your suppliers, do the exact same thing. Who's the best supplier that you're working with and who's the worst? From Shootopia standpoint, I can say that I have um, several big brands that I wish I didn't give a dollar to because they're absolutely okay. terrible to deal with. And I won't name any names, but, <laughs> but basically absolutely terrible to deal with. But they're powerful brands and they represent a big piece of our, our business. There's other brands that are just as powerful that are absolutely wonderful to deal with. Mm -hmm. And when you look at that sort of thing, it's like, okay, well, how can I give more to them? And how can I find more suppliers that are like that, that actually are contributing and acting as my partner in order to deliver my promise to my customers? Right. So when you align these all of these people, your client, your team, and your suppliers, all together wrapped around your vision of your business and delivering that promise to them so that they all see a better future. Your team sees a better future working for you. Your suppliers see a better future because you're their partner. And your client sees a better future because you're delivering this promise. Things start to happen. And what that creates is that creates profit, which is the fourth P. What a really nice segue there. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So, you know, when we look at profit, the, the beautiful thing about profit is when these, when these three things align properly then you can enjoy some profit and, yeah. and it's important. I mean, we get in business to live the life that we want to live and you can't do that without profit. You can't do that without the money coming in. And, you know, when you're feeling overworked, when you're feeling overwhelmed, when you're feeling like there's nothing left in the tank, there's only 24 hours in a day. And as Dean Jackson, uh, one of my coaches has said, um, basically in the past, you can't buy more right. and you can't use less. Mm. There's 24 hours in a day. You can't buy more and you can't use less. But what you can do is you can buy other people's time. And that's setting up the structure in your business so that when you have enough profit that you can start buying other people's time to take over the frustrations, to take over the things that you really don't want to do or probably aren't even good at doing, you're just doing them because you always have or because you feel you need to, then you're starting to elevate yourself up into a different level of leadership, allowing yourself the opportunity to grow even more. And the people that are coming in underneath you, taking those positions, that's their level of love and expertise, and they're working in their unique ability too. So when that starts to happen, it really becomes sort of this powerful flow of momentum so that, you know, your business is enjoying uh, the life that, you know, you know, a life of its own, but that life has been created through all of these systems that you've put in place in order to deliver you back what you want out of your life as the entrepreneur and why you got in business in the first place. Right. Yeah. No, those are strong points and it's so cyclical, right? So you have profits so that you can invest more in the people, but you always have to still be evaluating the people and the processes and the product. So it, the work is never done, yeah. but as you said, there, it is, I think, a funny misnomer that people go into business and they be, want to be entrepreneurs to because they dream about being able to work from anywhere, being able to have all this free time. Yeah. Um, and when you're building, it's really not like that necessarily no. um you know and so trying to figure out those tweaks to simplify and so to get to that point where you can hit that sweet spot and really start to enjoy the labor i mean there's 
you can't do this in the first two months of business. It takes time, <laughs> you know? And I think and everybody who's getting into business, if you're new in business and you're getting into business, you have to put your head down and work dang hard for the first two to three years. I mean, that's that's just the way it is, right? I've been doing this for a long time and helped a lot of people. You know, you just have to put your time in to get things up and running unless you're, you know, have really deep pockets basically to, to get the right people right <laughs> off the bat. But for most of us, let's face it, um, you know, we're, we're getting going however we can to make this thing happen and then roll along. And once you start pulling in some of that profit by setting up some of the structure around that we've just talked about, then you can start getting your time back. Then you can, start, and that's what most people really want. They want the freedom of their time. And you, when you have the freedom of the time, you can elect to spend more time with your loved ones. You can elect to go away on a vacation. Oh, wouldn't it be nice to go away on a vacation? Some people are saying, I haven't even been away for a weekend, let alone a week or two weeks, right? And the way I want to do it with mo most of my clients is that I want to be able to help them set up this turnkey business so that when they go away for two weeks, mm -hmm. it's really not a big deal, yeah. you know? It, it's fine. Life will go on. Business will go on. And we set up the right structures in place that can happen for you too. And I think that's, you know, I, I've lived it and I, I currently live it and I currently run other businesses too. This is not something I just coach to and don't operate and, and mm -hmm. use myself. Um, so from that perspective, it, it's something that, that you can do through time if you set it up properly. And, and that's what we do at Simplifying Entrepreneurship is help people through that process. Wonderful. So what is next uh, for you on your journey as an entrepreneur? So for me, um, I, I love this podcast journey. I love talking to people. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. I've been on a lot of podcasts here this quarter, and that was sort of my goal. Wonderful. So my, my next goal, my next sort of quarterly goal is to uh, write a book. And, you know, I'm, I'm sort of got my framework in the background working on that. So the next big thing for simplifying entrepreneurship for me is to hopefully have a book out by Q2 of 2022. Uh, I'd like to have sort of my draft done by Christmas time and, uh, you know, roll through, uh, roll through from there. So it's a, it's a new project. I haven't ever written a book before, but uh, it's going to be on this, this whole concept of frustrate, turning your frustrations to freedoms, Annika, so that we can, um, you know, push out this message that we're talking about today and hopefully help entrepreneurs out there um, live this dream. And, you know, that's why we got into business is to live this dream and to make a better future for ourselves. Mm -hmm. But in order for us to do that, we need to help other people have a better future too. And that's the product that we deliver and the promise that we deliver. Absolutely. Um, and, and knowing that you do this program as coaching, mm. um, how do people find you? What's the easiest way for somebody to get in touch or to follow you on social media so that they can get yeah. all these helpful hints and tips and tricks? Sure. So just go to Simplifying Entrepreneurship. If you Google that, you'll find my my simplifyingentrepreneurship.com and my podcast and all that kind of stuff. You can reach me at peter at shoot simplifying entrepreneurship. Um, dot com as well. I know that's a long one, but uh, you know, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Instagram at Pete um, Moore, basically from that perspective, I've got a great little assessment on my website right now too. So for anybody that's in business that wants to sort of self-assess where they're at from their leadership perspective and their business perspective, um, you can hop on to my website and right at the top right-hand corner, you know, the power corner of your website, <laughs> go up there, click the button, and you can take a, an assessment that takes about, you know, 15, 10, 12, 15 minutes to mm -hmm. do, but kicks you back sort of some stuff that you can work on some things that you're doing really well, okay. as well as some things that's like, okay, maybe I should plan on doing a little bit of homework on that. And whether you use a coach to help you through that, or whether it's something that just sort of self uh, gives you a, a little boost and a little sort of shot in the arm to go and do something. That's, that's the whole idea. Wonderful. I think a lot of people listening will, will be taking advantage of that. Cool. Um, so I know I'm going to as well. Is that out? I'm nice. always looking for, and I think that's one thing as an entrepreneur, you always have to be looking for ways to improve and oh, looking yeah. for people who can help you with that journey. So sure. I, I know that I'm not the best at everything that, you know, who is that I do. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the, the more I can simplify those aspects, the better. Yeah. Um, so Pete, I always like to ask people what their favorite quote is. Well, I used a few of them uh, yeah. today. You know, uh, <laughs> I, I like the one around time. I like, uh, I mean, there are, there are so many great quotes out there. And, and I think, you know, I, I like the idea 
that you have to be healthy to run a healthy business. And so, I mean, I'm, if, if those, we're not doing video here today, but I'm not the absolute picture of health. I'm not going to be on the front of men's magazine, but at the end of the day, I'm conscious about my health and I'm conscious about my sleep, my weight, my exercise, all of these things, because in order for me to be an excellent leader, I need to be as healthy as I can because of this, this uh, one quote that I heard from uh, Joe Polish several years ago. I don't think it's his quote. Maybe it is, but I certainly heard it from him. And it goes something like this. The person that has their health has a thousand dreams and the person that does not has but one. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, if, if we don't have our health, we can't, we're not mentally ready. We're not physically ready for the day. We can't lead a team. We can't, grow our business, the importance of your health as a leader is bar none, the most important thing that you can do for the, for the growth of your business and to have a better life. So I think uh, that would be the quote that I would uh, end off with here today, Annika. I love it. I'm definitely a proponent of that. Um, and I was trying to think of ways that you can take a few minutes of your day, yeah. even just to, just to step away from the zoom meetings, right? Mm. Step away from the work and just reframe things, go yeah. take a walk, go stare at the ocean, whatever it is. Um, wonderful. Well, Pete, I really loved our conversation today. Is there any awesome. last thing that you want to share with our audience? I'm good. I think we've, we've shared a lot of good stuff yeah. here today. And if anybody has any questions, just reach out to me and I'm always happy to help for sure. Great. Thank you so much again. Today, my guest was Pete Moore from Simplifying Entrepreneurship. Great to have you on the show. I know I'm going to be checking out your website and several of our listeners will too. Um, and we'll be back again next week. Thanks again for listening to another week of Your Brand Amplified. Want more tips and tricks? Check us out online at www.annikapr.com, on social media at Annika Jackson PR, or join our three-month PR Incubator Bootcamp for small businesses via www www.princubator.com Walmart Plus members save on meeting up with friends. Save on having them over for dinner with free delivery with no hidden fees or markups. That's groceries plus napkins plus that vegetable chopper to make things a bit easier. Plus, members save on gas to go meet them in their neck of the woods. Plus, when you're ready for the ultimate sign of friendship, start a show together with your included Paramount Plus subscription. Walmart Plus members save on this plus so much more. Start a 30-day free trial at walmartplus.com. Paramount Plus, a central plan only. Separate registration required. See Walmart Plus terms and conditions. Stop using five apps to manage your marketing. Meet Simplified One. It's an AI-powered all-in-one platform for creators and small businesses to design, make videos, and publish content to all social media platforms. Visit simplified.com and use Annika 30 to save 30% today. Earning your degree online doesn't mean you have to go about it alone. At Capella University, we're here to support you when you're ready. From enrollment counselors who get to know you and your goals, to academic coaches who can help you form a plan to stay on track. We care about your success and are dedicated to helping you pursue your goals. Going back to school is a big step, but having support at every step of your academic journey can make a big difference. Imagine your future differently at capella.edu.